Um, for that, we've got Melissa Armo, the founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh, joining us, along with Daniel Rubino, the executive editor of Windows Central. Welcome to the show. Melissa, I'm going to come to you first. You gave us some longs on here, and one of them uh, that kind of stuck out, we discussed it earlier in the show, is NVIDIA. Uh, parabolic move to the upside. It's overbought on every technical level that you can imagine. Implied volatility is rising. Why do you like, uh, do you continue to like this one? It's definitely going to continue higher. Just when you think things can't continue higher is exactly when they do. I don't know why, but people tend to short things that they think have made an extended move. That's a terrible idea. Why? The stock made brand new all-time highs this week. It broke out. It was a breakout play. I wouldn't consider it parabolic in my opinion, looking at the chart. This stock could very easily gap up on Monday morning. 320s in sight, 325, 330. I wouldn't put it past the stock going to 400. I'm not gonna say that happens next week. But I will tell you that once people start shorting it and then the shorts get blown through and then buyers come in and continue to buy it, that's how you get these crazy, crazy moves where you can't possibly think it can go, but it can. If any is one of those stocks can easily, easily run 30, 40, 50, 60 points in a day. It's a great stock to trade as an option, to be honest with you. Yeah, a lot of option premium in there and it's rising as the stock's rising. So uh, definitely uh, some, um some options trading going on, volumes picking up in there pretty significantly. Nearly 2 million calls traded in there just yesterday. Uh, but Daniel, if you take a look at this segment, uh, you know, you've got your AMDs, Intels, Qualcomm's in there also. Uh, with the supply chip uh, issues and de pent up demand still remaining, what names are you looking at here in the uh, semi space uh, to continue to grow or actually start to pick up some of those orders uh, and meet the demand? Yeah, so this is the million dollar question, right? When it comes to the chips right now, AMD actually seems to be uh, positioned a little bit better. They're expecting uh, the supply chain to resume uh, better for them in early 2022, whereas Intel is pushed out to as late as 2023. AMD attributes to this uh, basically better strategy planning and how they've been planning their chip supplies starting uh, right at the pandemic. And so they've been able to weather the storm a little bit better. That said, Intel just launched its 12th gen series and it's getting very, very good reviews. Uh, that's gonna be big for the holiday season. It remains to be seen though, how many of those chips they can actually ship to consumers and specifically gamers where that new Core i9 seems to be very strong. And it is taking the lead from AMD in terms of performance. Of course, that may be short-lived. AMD is expected to announce its new chips, or at least a revision to its M3 architecture, sometime in early 2022, possibly at CES. And then we'll be back into a TikTok between Intel and AMD. And that's very exciting for consumers. I'd also say, don't count Qualcomm out of this completely. We do expect them to announce some new processors, both for Chromebooks and PCs in the coming weeks. Uh, we don't know the details on those in terms of performance. They will still likely, very likely, I would say, be behind Apple, but they are making a lot of moves. Don't forget Qualcomm bought Nuvia earlier this year. They're the same team that actually built Apple's chips, and Qualcomm believes they can actually beat Apple in the long term, but we're talking two to three years out. You still have NVIDIA, too, speaking of, who's doing very well. They're in the process of buying ARM, ARM Limited, that is, and that unfortunately is running through some hiccups with the European Commission and some investigations. I still expect it to go through, but the process is going to take a little bit longer than expected. NVIDIA with ARM and its RTX graphics, it's gonna be a very interesting combo, probably though not until 2022, 2023 at least. Yeah, and you've also got the competitors pushing back against that deal. It tells you right there how valuable ARM is considered out there in the tech space. But Melissa, another name that uh, that you had on your radar was on semiconductor hitting all-time highs. Earlier in the sessions, pulled back a little bit today. Uh, tell me why you like this one. Again, it made new highs. The fact that it pulled back a little bit probably was because we're selling off a little bit in the market as well. And that's why NVIDIA came in a bit in the afternoon today, too. So the market was expecting that they do the vote today for the stimulus plan. For whatever reason, the market wants this vote to go through, wants it to go through. I don't see why. Personally, I don't think it's going to be good. I think it's taking on too much debt, but I think that's why you're seeing selling an ON, uh, ON, plus the fact that, again, it was at new highs. But again, it doesn't mean it can't continue. It doesn't mean any of these things can't continue, including QCOM. 
All of these things look like gross stocks out that would be good long-term buys if you want to do a swing trade, say, out till the next six months into 2022. Even though we're towards the end of earnings season here for 2021, if you can get in something and hold on to, do, to it or do even a long-term option into at least the first quarter earnings for 2022 for many of these stocks, I think that they're good buys. There's no reason to expect that they're not going to continue um, higher. And also, in reference to QCOM, they were expecting the chip shortages so they planned ahead for that earlier in the year. So they're positioned very, very well. And that could, again, another stock that could easily run up 20, 25 points in a day. That's Those types of stocks that can move in that price point in that fast, that quick, are great for active day traders uh, like Ameritrade has. There's a good stocks to trade where you can get in and you can get out within 24 to 48 hours and make a bundle. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of speculation uh, using the option market recently. I do a segment on unusual option activity, and we're usually hitting those tech names, Melissa. Uh, but, Daniel, if you take a look at this sec uh, sector, uh, and you look at AMD versus Intel, when Intel is underperforming, they've had you know production issues, um, will, can they turn it around? Is this an opportunity for investors in Intel, or do you just stick with the, uh, the stalwart a uh, AMD in this one? It's always Intel's battle to lose. I will say the 12th gen really shows Intel's back. I feel very strong about Intel right now. That doesn't mean I would count AMD out. I think this is going to be a back and forth between both companies. The consumers is going to who, is who wins at the end of this, right? And, of course, enterprise with the server market as well. But Intel is doing very well. They show that with competition, they still have it. The 12th gen brings a new architectural design. It ties well into Windows 11. They're still positioned in the gaming market very well. And unfortunately, I would say for AMD, they may have missed their opportunity to really dethrone Apple. They've taken around 20% of the market, but I'm not sure it's going to go much higher than that. That said, though, you know, AMD will announce new chips soon. It's going to be a back and forth, and it's just going to depend on when you're buying as opposed to who you're buying. And I think that's going to be very exciting. And then you have Apple's M1 chip out there, of course, gaining all the attention. Both companies are focused on that as well as trying to achieve the similar efficiency that Apple has gained and Intel has a longer way to go but they are showing very promising signs here and I think they're going to do well they do need to catch up in terms of production uh, that's going to be an issue but we are seeing movement there again they are building a new fab here in the United States I believe in Arizona just uh, well just started building so we still got a, another year or two before that kicks in but they will come around and I think this whole market is going to be very fascinating in the next couple of years. You still have Samsung out there as well with its Exynos processor. They're teaming up with AMD, which is going to be really interesting for laptops. And of course, you have NVIDIA getting into the game as well, and Qualcomm is making movements. So you have a lot, a lot of companies here that are all doing things. And I think it's going to be just very exciting to watch if you're an investor. Yeah, big opportunities. And real quick, Melissa, I wanted to get your take on a, a short that you had. Skyworks got downgraded today. Uh, why don't you like this one? Because it fell seven points out of the open. <laughs> when someone says that, I mean, it's a disaster. I mean, and when you look at the market, again, the market was making new highs and gapping up this morning, and the stock opened and tanked. And again, when you're looking at the sector overall, and you see everything strong, 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 making new highs, and then you have something else in the same sector that's tanking, that's not a good sign for it at all. I would say that was a great short today if you happen to catch it out of the game. And it still looks possibly lower into next week. I definitely wouldn't be going long that where there's so many other good things to go long. You want to stay with the things that are strong, particularly in a strong market. And what's really interesting is, again, when you look at Apple right now, Apple doesn't look anywhere near as good as NVIDIA. So this sector, this sector that we're talking about, this whole segment is actually stronger right now than many of the stocks that we would normally be talking about, normally be doing like like uh, Apple, for example, or even Netflix, uh, it's it's amazing to me. It, it's exciting in a way because, it's, again, this is all new stuff, innovation, all the AI. But really, you've got to go with the stuff that's strong. And SWKS was not strong at all today. Yeah. Uh, you play in the momentum here, Melissa. I like it. All right. That's going to wrap up this segment. Thank you so much. That's Melissa Armo, the founder and owner of The Stock Swoosh, and Daniel Rubino, the executive editor of Window, Windows Central.